So on the banks of the River Severn at Atcham, on the Lim Anglis card, really is one of those places that I love to come and fish. It's peaceful, it's quiet. You know, you're not too far from Shrewsbury and the bustle of the town, but here, you know, you very rarely see another angler, really, if you can get out the way on some of the pegs and find your own bit of the world to relax. You can see the sheep in the other field, there's normally some big bulls in there and you know swans about there's definitely not as many of them in the river this year which might be a sign why there's not as much weed you know not as much food not as much swans why they're not about as much but just looking around you can see it's overcast and there is a bit of a nip in the air you know a nice breeze that's cooling and you can see over there if we zoom in you can just see where the winter floods have collapsed that bank there and the damage it's done and that just shows how ever changing the rivers are. At the moment it's just good to be sat behind the rods. A bit different than the stick float fishing that you normally see on the channel. Just more relaxed, more chilled out. But you've got to keep the bait going in. What you've got to remember is just how many fish are in the river. All the little roach, the little perch, the little minnows. You know, can all eat your hemp and the pellets and have a go at them. And you've got to get past all them to get to Mr Barbel. Giving it 10 minute casts at the moment and every 10 minutes I'm casting both rods and periodically putting a pouch of hemp on this inside line so you've got to put the bait in it's a big river full of fish and you've got to attract them in so caught me a bit by surprise on the far bank rod the first fish of the day a lovely bang on the rod and a first fish and a chub I'm just fishing those small pellets like we'll look at in a bit but we're not a blanker Let's get him straight back. And with this slack on this inside, I'm pretty sure Mr. Pike won't be far about. And if anyone's gonna find it, I will. it's gonna be Azza, because he's fishing the stick float next to us. Um, and what we're gonna do is then, obviously as we go into dark, my uncle's gonna fish a feeder, and we're gonna go and try for Mr. Barbel. But a nice start to the blog, a nice early fish, on the second cast so conditions wise we've had really hot conditions the past couple of weeks and a lot of the river stretches of the seven have been closed and like i say i've not really been down here because of the car really being a bit unreliable um got it fixed and we're down on the river seven and we're into july but we've had a bit of rain about there's been a few showers you can see it's overcast there is a tad bit of color in the river even though it's you know really low to get that early chub is a good sign. I can say we've been putting hemp just on the edge of the, the slack into the fast water that I can just reach with the catapult. So I'm going to keep that going in every now and again. It's round about half past three, four o'clock. So we've got plenty of time, you know, to move into evening. I'm hoping the overcast stays because that's obviously going to make it easier. If it was low, clear and bright conditions, it'd be a lot harder, definitely. But the key is now is obviously to get a bit of bait in and start hopefully drawing some fish into the swim. Now, I'm just going to keep casting into that shadow, probably three quarters of the way across to halfway, just to start getting a better bait down. And like you see there, that's not the smallest fish in the world. So there's one or two better fish about. There's been one or two topping over there. So to get that chub early on is great. You see there, just get a little knock. On that inside rod and we'll go over the baits in a minute you know when we've settled in but the plan for now is just to keep casting so one thing that i do like about fishing the smaller pellet is you get an idea what's going on in the swim you know you're catching fish of all sizes you know the chub the roach and you can see and judge how to feed the swim you see there he's come on a size 14 hook on a tiny pellet beautiful fish looking at the bait for the session the main ground bait mix is the hinders barbel bomb ground bait the base mix of that obviously is very dark and it does contain some of the ellipse pellets in there in there i've mixed in some of the treasure particle hemp and a few more of the loose pellets just to you know give plenty of body to the mix but ultimately it is there just to plug the feeder the first thing i mix when i get to the peg uh, nice and simple i don't really worry about clumps like that you know if you're fishing for roach and small fish then yeah 
but when you're fishing for big fish like barbel and chub you know the clumps not really an issue but that is the ground bait mix that we're going to be using today so looking at the hook bait options we've got some eight mil and some six mil pellets like i said there's no point bringing the whole bags with you you might as well just carry a little pouch and in there you've got enough hook baits for a number of seasons but got a mixture there of the ellipse ones and some of the sonya baits ones as well just to give you them different variety in hook baits the main feed in the pellets is going to be the hinders ellipse pellets the little small ones and i've glugged them with some of the ellipse oil and left them overnight and again on one of the rods we have got a bigger bait and we've gone with one of them but gives you that option of just trying bigger baits and different approaches based on the conditions if it's up and coloured you've got the options of smell you can see there we've got all different types and I just carry that in a nice little pouch river low and clear my main approach is going to be around these smaller pellets and we'll take a look at the rigs that we're going to use now and how we're going to approach the swim the river low and clear my tactics are more refined than they would normally be normally I would go with 10 pound line but today we're using 8 pound fluorocarbon and we're going with a size 14 grappler hook and on there we've got a band and as you can see one of those small pellets one of the eight mil or the six mil pellets the main part of the rig is really simple it's a bolt and run kit and we've got a sleeve just to aid separation on the cast on the inside rod we've gone with a bit of a different approach we've got slightly heavier line in in the 10 pound line and then we've got a bigger hook in a size 10 and on there we've got one of those bigger baits like the boilies that you've seen the beauty of these rigs is they're really interchangeable you know quick change so you can really change down to a lighter hook link at any point so you've seen the tactics there and it is noticeable that you know on the heavier rod we've had a few taps nothing to strike at on the right hand rod where we're fishing the eight pound line the smaller hook bait in the pellet there's been two fish on that so far so a much more you know refined approach and you get more of an idea of what's in the swim on that one we know very little about we just know we've had taps you don't know how to feed it but with that one we know them chubbed out there and some of the pellets are getting at so that just shows how two different approaches can give you more of an insight into the swim what we're waiting for now is them rods to really hoop over with a barbel and there we go again on the far bank line Another thin, perfect little chublet. Be grateful on the float, you know, on the stick float. And lovely colours in its gill. It's coming on that small pellet. Keeping on casting, keeping the bait going in. And hopefully, somewhere out there amongst these is Mr. Barbel. So I just had a weird thing happen on that far bank line. Just had a small chublet on. Got it halfway across the river. All went solid. And then I've come back with a cut hook link. So obviously Mr. Pike has had his way. I do keep hook links ready made up, but I'm just going to tie up a one fresh on the bank. And this is what I will use for my lighter hook links and what you know I use when it's low and clear. Or if I can get away with it in a swim like this that is quite open and not snaggy, this will always be my go-to rig. So use the floral carbon or the mono hook link, depending on which one I feel like using. Strong hooks in small sizes so it'll either be a 12 or a 14 for the little small pellet band you can see up there i've got all the bands that i need in that little compartment so for those that are interested that is the basics that i'll use to tie the rig there we go the final presentation it's just a simple band tied on with a palomar knot and then a knotless knot i try and keep the band as tight to the hook as i can some people have longer hairs if they want to avoid the chub but as you know from the channel i like to catch anything that swims really so I have it tight to the hook so I can catch chub, roach and of course Mr. Barbel. If you are going to go light, like 8 pound line and 12 and 14 hooks, you know, there's plenty of patterns of hook out there, but pick one that you're reliable and strong. Obviously then Barbel can really fight, so you need a hook that is up to the battle. And there must be plenty of those fish on that far bank line. No sooner we have tied the new hook link on, just picked up another little chublet. Just changed over the left hand rod to a, a smaller pellet like on the right hand one and if you just watch the tip you can just start seeing the odd little activity on it you know the little taps on the feeder like there you see that 
and that's just the difference in you know changing the size of bait it just gives you more of an idea of what's going on in the swim you know there's obviously fish in the swim and it'll give us an idea of what exactly is in there are they big enough to eat a pellet and then you can judge just how much bait you've been putting in with regards baiting up i've been keeping putting the hemp in with the catapult every now and again i've been putting quite a lot of um casts in you know every 10 minutes for the first two hours so now i'm just going to slacken it off a bit you know with this, this bait out there i'm just going to move it to probably 20 minutes now you know every cast and just leaving it a bit you can see there on that left hand rod there's plenty of activity when you just lower the size of bait right so that changed to a smaller bait on the inside rod it just shows not always a big bait is the way to go sometimes going a bit smaller on a smaller bait you can get the bite you know we were getting plenty of taps on that bigger bait and just moving down and keeping on casting and the rods hooped over it's dead on six o'clock so we've been fishing for around about what three three hours and i'm not sure whether it's a barbel or a chub didn't half push off and say i think by that it's possibly a barbel you just gotta take your time because you're on that light hook link you know that eight pound line size 14 hook so just take your time and he's only a small barbel for the first one of the season and more than welcome and with conditions so low and clear I'm going to give him a good rest in the edge before we even blog him he is quite lively you know thrashing about but going to give him a good rest Make sure it's fully recovered. The first barbel of the season, what beautiful colours. The river's been low and clear and it's just a beautiful example of a barbel. Again, just showing what a little change can make. Coming over that bed of that Cheshire particle, just moving down to a smaller bait proper made up to get one before dark and to get it straight back and get the rod back out so with that fish resting in the margin after it's been blogged I'm going to give it plenty of rest before it goes back make sure it's fit and healthy and i'm going to get some more hemp over that inside line you know just shows you know you don't have to always cast to the other side of the river to get bites if you feed the swim correctly and you know going down in that hook size you can get bites not far out there he goes so the setup for the session is my 1.75 pound Corum Excalibur rods and I've teamed them up with a 4,000 sized Zelos reel and on there I've got 12 pound barbel line the far bank rod has just gone off and you forget how violent the takes can be from barbel you really do and that is where the enjoyment for me comes. One minute you sat there and the tips are still. And the next minute <laughs> you're bent round and the rod's bent over. And I have missed this. They say the car's been off the road, you know, and not worthy of the hour and 20 journey down. But boy, does it feel good. And I say just keeping on casting, keeping on the bait going in. quite a jagged fight and just a weird fight so proper made up with that when your looks in your looks in it was hooked in the tail I thought it was a weird fight all the way through but you've got to be thankful because there'll be other times where they come off just over seven pound and a bit more of what we come for we come for one we've had two proper made up let's get it straight back so sorry for the quick vlog 
of the fish. The most important thing is obviously with the low conditions, getting it back and getting it back healthy. I'm straight back in the net and a good rest. So good to be back after the barbel. You forget just how hard they fight. They are beautiful fish and yeah, good to be back on the seven. So I've literally just put that barbel back, give it a good rest. So there's probably been about 15 minutes between hooking the last one, resting it, blogging it and letting it go. Straight away it's been in two minutes and it's gone again and <laughs> I did not expect this one bit. When we arrived today, conditions low, you just wonder whether or not you're going to get a bite and the only problem is now you get proper addicted to it don't you and you want to come back all the time if anyone's new to barbel fishing when you get them under the rod tip always be prepared because they will always go on one last run so after holding that other barbel up i didn't really expect to be holding up another one so quickly hot and bothered but hot and bothered with barbel we don't mind it's been a frantic last hour and you can probably just hear the rod going again on that inside rod so my uncle is going to be playing his first barbel of the evening but for everyone who watches the vlog on the rivers in nearly all the vlogs my uncle's in them but like you've got to respect people who don't want to always be on film he's an avid stick float angler and taught me loads on the rivers and when that barbel in the net that's resting went over the net i said to him if it goes again you grab the rod and yeah while I was blogging that fish, the rod hooped over on that inside line down there. So we've got fish on both lines. And let's just see if we can get it in and get a shot of them both on the mat. Here we go, a quick picture of them both on the mat while I've just unhooked my uncle's one. We'll get them both in the edge to rest and we'll get a picture of my uncle's for it. After quite a quiet start, you know, a little change on the inside ones brought that barbel. And then since then, it's just been manic. And say we had that one on the outside rod, blogged it, let it go. And no sooner as I'd let it go and cast the rod, it was two minutes, it was gone again. Um, while I was blogging that, I said to my uncle, obviously, if the rods go, you have the next one. And the downstream rod went while I was blogging it. So, yeah, four barbel. And it's half past eight and now just a little bit of calm has ensued for about 15 minutes and you can just see the evening creeping in on the river seven it is a beautiful place to wet a line and one thing we are getting this evening is a beautiful display from those bats that's coming right underneath the rod tips as you can see and you know we're getting the odd pull on the tip but it is them bats hitting the line it's just great just to see them doing what they do and in summer you're thankful of it because obviously it'll be time for those mozzies to be out now it's when they get you isn't it so no sooner had i said that piece about the bats the far bank rod just bounced a couple of times at first I thought it was the bats, but then it just stayed. And I don't know whether it's a barbel or not, but we've definitely got a fish on the other end. So if there was ever a prize for best barbel impression of a chub, this would have won. The bite wasn't the most convincing, it just pulled round. And I was convinced, like my uncle was, when it was coming in, that it was a chub. No screaming run, no, you know, pulling a line. It just kind of coming a bit like a bream, actually. So very surprised when it come under the rod tip to see a barbel. So right, so the session comes to an end there now. Just going to head back to the car. I hope you've enjoyed this week's vlog. It's been great fun getting back on the banks of the River Seven. I want to wish you all tight lines in your own fishing. And I'll catch us all next week. Tight lines.